Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. A while back, probably maybe a year ago, I did a video about five shots that you should add to your arsenal. Well, I've got five more for you today. These are some really cool shots that you can do on the court. They are highly effective, and I recommend that you at least give them a try. So here we go. The first shot that we're talking about here is the backhand roll. So the backhand roll typically happens when you have a shot that's floating right out in the front of you here in the kitchen, but it's not quite high enough to where you can just kind of punch it down like this, okay? It's a little bit lower and it's probably maybe the height of the net. And what a lot of people do is they'll do the, the backhand roll, which is where you come below and then up like this. And it's a straight up kind of motion. And what that does is, is it gets a lot of force on the ball, but more importantly, it gets a lot of top spin. The big risk with hitting shots below the net is that they have to go high to clear the net. When they go high though, your opponent can hit it down. And that's the tricky part. The backhand roll, or just a roll in general, creates a lot of top spin to keep that from happening. The trick to the shot is you have to get kind of below the ball. So you have to squat and then come straight up with your paddle. One thing that can help is sometimes it's very awkward to come straight up like this. So if you want to kind of flick your paddle a little bit on the end, you don't have to, but for a lot of people that feels natural. So just kind of do your own experimenting with that. You'll be able to figure out what, what, what it is that you want to do. Try to get the face pointed down just slightly, okay? And come straight up and you have to really go at it. You can't do this softly. It's gotta be, you gotta commit yourself fully, okay? So let me show you some examples. Just like that. Notice how I really went after it. There was no hesitation, got a nice squat, and came straight up on it. That was a, a lot lower one. You can do it when it's low like that, but again, you have to commit to it. Now you can do it on the bounce like that, Totally possible, but you have to make sure that it bounces high enough. That's a very easy way to give your opponent a free point by trying to attack off of a, a bouncing ball. Can happen. It's an easy way to make an unforced error though, so be careful. Okay, this is an interesting one. This one is tough, guys. Let me tell you right now, this is really hard to do. It's one of the hardest shots in the game, and that is the brush up third or the top spin third shot, basically. What it is, it's a, it's a third shot, just like you're used to, but instead of kind of picking the ball up and sort of tossing it into the air, we're instead going to come below as we usually do, but we're gonna brush up on it and hit up like this, and it will generate an enormous amount of top spin. It arcs over the net, lands near the feet, but there's a lot of top spin on it. It's a brutal, brutal shot when you get it right, okay? But it is very, very difficult. You wanna do exactly what you've been doing with your third shot, which is coming below it, okay? But when you begin to make impact with the ball, you wanna feel like you're gonna be flipping your forearm over like this, or rolling it over. That's where the term roll comes from. You don't wanna do it entirely like this, but just a little bit of a roll over is what's gonna help you to get the top spin, okay? Let me just show you the technique here. There is definitely going to be a little bit of acceleration through the shot. You almost, it almost feels like you're doing a return.
The next shot I'd like to talk about here is the low to high attack. So we've kind of talked about the roll a little bit, but this is where it can really come in handy. It's generally best to not attempt to hit hard balls when they're below the net line here, okay? When they're below the top of the net because they have to go high. When they go high, they can hit it down, okay? But if you aim at a certain spot, it can cause them to kind of get jammed up and it can be really, really effective. What we want to focus on here is when we get the shot, most likely on a bounce here, <clears throat> so we want to focus on brushing up on the ball, hitting up on it, right? We want to kind of roll the forearm over like we talked about with the third shot, okay? And that's going to create the top spin and it's going to create the attack, okay? So as we're dinking back and forth here, it's going to dink like usual. And then when I get that shot that I like, <clears throat> Want to attack like that. Here's the thing though, is that you don't want you don't want to just attack randomly. I mean it's okay to attack if you think you can do it, but what you want to do is aim for the dominant shoulder or the dominant hip. So on me here, my dominant hip is here, dominant shoulder is here. It's very hard to block a shot that's at your shoulder. With a hip, it's a little bit easier, but it's still difficult. So try to aim for those spots and that will create some magical results like that okay brutal stuff be aware though if you're defending if you're the one defending against these shots be aware of the angle because sometimes these balls are going to go out and even if you don't win on that first shot it's still going to create an awkward shot that you can win on the next time around So brush up. You can tell that ball, obviously I would have killed that ball, you know. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I know, that's the point. What you want to do is try to wait for one that's high, okay, like this. That can really help to make this more effective. Here's the other thing, you do have to be careful about using this too often. If you do this over and over again, they're gonna figure out what's going on and they're gonna let some of those go. So as you progress through a game or through a match, let's say you're doing best two out of three out of tournament or whatever, it's game three, you gotta be really careful about, about sort of playing your cards too early here. Now here's a really cool shot that you can do. In the last video we did about five shots for your arsenal, we talked about the cross court lob, which is very effective. But what about the down the line lob? This one's really cool. Now, I call a shot like this a chip. I come from golf, so that's just what makes sense to me. But it's basically a very low lob. So the, the opponent that would be in front of me or the, the opponent that's from your perspective here is most likely going to be a right-handed player, which means that their non-dominant side is on the sideline here. That gives me a little bit of an opening. So if my opponent, if I'm, cr if I'm cross court dinking here with my opponent and they send one that's a little bit too high or maybe it bounces too high here, I can indeed do a cross court lob cr uh, this way, but I can also do a little bit of a lower sort of chip down the line if my opponent is trying to camp the center line here, okay? So let me show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna be waiting for a shot that's a little bit deeper here in kind of near the kitchen line on this side. Oftentimes what that will do is that will signal to the, the opponent in front of you that it's possible that you're going to pop one up because it's, it's behind you and it's a little bit harder to get cross court. What you can do is trick them and go straight down the line with a lob. Like that, <laughs> try that, it's so cool. But again though, you have to make sure that they're at least a little bit over on this side, on the center line. So the next shot here isn't necessarily a shot, but it's a threat of a shot. And what we're gonna talk about is the threat of the Ernie, not necessarily the Ernie itself. Ernies are great and all, okay? But it's more like the threat of it. So what typically happens with an Ernie is your partner will dink something cross this way and it'll either land over here or it'll land and bounce out this way. 
And what that causes your opponent to do is to back up and try to dump one down the line like this. And what people will do is the Ernie. So they'll come over and either try to attack directly here or what we're gonna talk about is the threat of the Ernie and they'll do something like this. And they'll just stand right out in front of the net like this, okay? And that, ca that causes your opponent who's right here to be pressured. That puts an enormous amount of pressure to them because they're trying to hit a ball cross court that's way deep back here and it's hard to do. So what you're gonna do, the way you can practice this is you're gonna dink back and forth like this and you're gonna you're gonna hit deep shots up the line okay so wherever wherever you are on the court focus on hitting shots on the Ernie side deep and then you're gonna follow up with the movement like this okay and what happens it's so funny because what happens is they freak out so hit really deep shots like <laughs> like that and it, it it's so funny but it's very very effective okay so you get the point right it's not so much the ernie itself but it's the it's the threat of it and what typically happens is your opponent will hit a shot and as the ball is going over you will follow the movement of the ball to the side and to get ready, okay? Try that out, it's really cool. All right guys, that's it. Those are five more shots for your pickleball arsenal. Keep in mind that these shots, some of these shots are a little bit more niche. You're not gonna use them very often like the, the down the line sort of lob chippy kind of thing, but it's always good to have these shots in your bag because you never know when you're going to need them. Anyway guys, head on over to pickleballkitchen.com. Got a bunch of stuff on there. Thank you guys so much for joining me as usual. I'll see you next time.